Do foreigners have more rights in Linden than Lindeners? Personally, I think it's a bit hyperbolic to say that Lindeners have less rights than foreigners. However, as far as Linden is concerned, it certainly seems that way. It's mainly because the Lindeners observe the government's treatment of them and their issues, and then juxtapose that with the government's treatment of the Venezuelan migrants in their community and their issues. I'm the Unspecialist. Let's talk about the migrant situation in Venezuela and how that provides a pretty interesting picture of what's happening across the entire country. As far as I can tell, the official perception of Linden is that Linden is the land of squatters. By the way, those aren't my words. On one hand, you have successive governments being either apathetic or heavy-handed as it relates to the treatment of squatters in Linden. The regularization effort has progressed at the same rate or same urgency as the Aubrey Barker Road. And on the other hand, we have Venezuelan migrants also squatting. However, their effect on life in Linden has gone largely uncovered. Last year, we heard a minister say that there were no Venezuelan migrants in Region 10. The whole time, Lindeners were seeing Venezuelan migrants almost every day. Therefore, whoever was reporting the information to the government was either blind or completely disconnected from the streets. That isn't surprising, considering that around the same time, we also heard from multiple government officials that 80% of Venezuelan migrants are either Guyanese or of Guyanese heritage. Between that time and the more recent stories, those numbers were not updated, at least not anywhere that I could find. So the official treatment of Linden, we can safely assume was out of sight, out of mind. More recently, while I was working in Linden, I saw lots of Venezuelan migrants squatting and many of them were working in the sawmills. Quite different to the official narrative of the situation in Linden at that time. So I decided to do some digging and see exactly what was happening. Unsurprisingly, once again, the stories on the ground from Lindeners were quite different than the official narrative. Many residents expressed their willingness to be hospitable and coexist. However, some of them expressed concerns about Venezuelans squatting in the bushes, some in front of persons' homes, inside abandoned homes, or inside incomplete homes that were under construction, but construction may have stopped for several months. Naturally, given the political climate and how things are on social media, many residents were unwilling to appear on tape for fear of being victimized. However, some were still willing to share their experiences. About two months ago, I go home afternoon. They come at me and will ask me is about when something of them. Children, teenagers, and adults. And they wanted to camp out in my yard after, right? And they said they have nothing to eat. So I go and I give them two packs of chow mein and two tuna. Same time the neighbors, them, some men, come over and they said, no, um, don't allow them people to stay. What I was going to tell them, no, they can't stay. And they left and they got down a place named Bongsland. And they were there like for four days until the people them had to beat them out. Because they done camp out on somebody's foundation, put up ten done built toilet. Right? So these people walking all over and taking over people's place just and just two hours away from me, they get a nurse girl, they get a bush of empty land and they it's full of bush. Not knowing these people go in the bush at the back of the yard, they're just two hours away from me. And probably the next set, right? There's about four of them. And they're done there and done frame up. Up to now, the frame's there. I'm done frame you? up. She says she hearing Spanish people talking. And she said when she peeped through the bush, it's Spanish and they're building up a little thing. They got the sawmill and they get strips. Enough of them that the sawmill. They're living and working there. So so them looking for elsewhere like bush and like empty land and they're going to put on and get a family. So they're then enough and they're bothering people and it's very dangerous. For instance, you tell them no. They're trying to bully you. Remember, I don't answer how they're speaking. Because they start rowing like in Spanish. So one of the boys will come over, the neighbor will see. I come over, he could talk Spanish, he understand. And he said they was cussing. But I don't, I can't talk Spanish, me understand Spanish. When the people come, this is two hours away, when they're debating, when the nurse, you're going to call the owners. And they come, well, they had big fights. Because they didn't want to move half the people land. And the, the people had to be there with cutlass, wood, all kind of thing. To get them out of there. It's like two months ago, June, like June, July. And I still at the back I live in, down the station street and up. Yeah. Also like 50 something, like what I see, about 50 something, the set, and the 20 something set, what I see. Like a place like A would develop, them in on the A plenty. 
They're located for the bushy area. What's making it uncomfortable? It's just last month, August month, they had a murder in, in Mobilisa, which is two Venezuelan murder demand. Yes. Right, what I know for sure is that, let me say in this area, if like 60% of the persons gone to work, you would break in your place and take your food stuff. Yeah, the because you're not working. And when they get hungry, they break in. So it's not safe for you. Police, yes, get police report, yes, because the incident with the neighbor, the okay. nurse girl, because she said she friend, because she called me, and I did just go. And she called the owners in. And they make a report before they, they come. Now, because these people coming from Till of the River, the owners. And they make a report at the station, and then they come down, because the police come after. They start putting lash in them. And they come and ask them to leave nicely. But remember, they're speaking in Spanish, and like they're arguing or cussing you in Spanish. You don't understand. At least I don't answer nothing in Spanish. They at by the police caught them by start beating them and they start running going away. But the people clear the land, they clean the land down now. Clean, clean. So you gonna know cause them left the bush in front and they was billing at the back. No, nobody never come wrong and ask. Nobody. You just heard a Linden resident say that although these incidents were reported, there was no underground follow-up from local government officials and certainly no national attention. At least not until Starbrook News covered the issue in October the only paper to do so at the time. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs responded quickly and the minister himself went out to London. However, his visit appeared to only be to speak with Venezuelans. Hence, it's unsurprising that after his visit, he concluded that migrants were adjusting well and that there were no issues with Londoners. Nonetheless, Starbrook News stood by their accounts and I'm certain that they have evidence given that everything in the article is observable in London and there are even more stories that can be heard from Londoners themselves. After Starbrook News stood by their account, the government, through the Department of Public Information, decided to directly attack Starbrook News' credibility instead of providing evidence to the contrary. Starbrook News even shared some egregious comments made by the minister after their initial report. In the article, Starbrook News quotes the minister as saying, Your article is false. When we went there, there was nobody to verify the claims. In your article, you couldn't even name who said anything. Who are these anonymous sources? Why aren't you naming them? These Venezuelans are not hungry. They are working. They are working harder than the Lindeners. And that's why they're getting the jobs. This is nonsense. Starbuck News needs to get themselves together. That article with Figueroa and Solomon is not balanced at all. I went and spoke to the Venezuelans myself. This is poor journalism. Starbuck News is writing as if the migrants are not humans. They are escaping a serious situation back in Venezuela. He raged. Once again, according to the Starbrook News article, despite the minister's comments, Starbrook News remained unmoved, which prompted a lackluster rebuttal from Ravin Singh's letter to the editor, describing Starbrook News' account as xenophobic. The editor-in-chief rightfully rebuffed his comments. What stands out to me is the unwillingness to admit fault and the unwillingness to engage with or even believe the reported accounts of Guyanese citizens and residents. Why do you think this is so? And this is not just happening in Linden. I can look back at a video I did previously where I talked about migrants in Ruby Bagdam. Since I did that video, things haven't gotten any better there. I think that there are many takeaways from this situation. One of them is that the elected officials are clearly talking past each other. You have the government having their narrative, sticking to it, and the same thing happening on the other side. As a result, the people in Linden are kind of forgotten. That leads to another issue, which is that the elected officials in Linden need to do a better job of reporting on these issues, whether to the government, to their people, or sensitizing the public via social media. They certainly need to do a better job of staying connected to those streets in Linden. That disconnect may be the reason why this story didn't get much attention until citizens reported it to the news. As for why they chose to report it to Starbrook News, I can't say. Maybe there was some greater degree of trust between them and that particular news agency. Nonetheless, almost everything that was in those Starbrook reports, I was able to observe for myself. And I'm certain that many Lindeners in the community would have also seen the same. And last but not least, I think that Lindeners need to be more vociferous about these issues in their community. If you don't think you can rely on your elected officials, if you don't think you can rely on government, you have to take matters into your own hands. By that, I simply mean sharing the issues that you go through, whether through social media or otherwise. 
The only way these issues can get attention when no one is paying attention is if you bring them to someone's attention. In my case, I just happened to be in Linden and see some of this happening and had the curiosity to look into it more. And I'll be the first to admit that if I didn't cross paths with these people or these issues, I may not have been doing a video about it myself. That's why I think this attitude should go beyond this current situation with migrants. It should go to regularization of communities in Linden and any other issues that the community may be going through that I may be unaware of or the country as a whole may be unaware of. I could be misguided as I'm only speaking from a limited perspective. Lindeners, you can let me know what's up in the comments. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.